Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is how to test hard drive speed. So now a lot of people want their computers to be faster and faster and faster, whether they have gaming computers, whether they have servers, the whole idea is how can their computer be faster. And whenever anybody thinks about making their computer faster, the first thing they think about is the CPU. The first thing they say is I want an i7 with who knows how many gigahertz processor, an L2, an L3 cache, that's what I want. That's what will make my computer faster. Then when they get that, they think, you know what else I need? I need more RAM, more and more RAM. If I have 64 gigs of RAM, that will make my computer faster. But one of the things that many people overlook is the real bottleneck for most systems and servers is actually the hard drive. So many times people will keep upgrading their CPUs, they upgrade their RAM, and their computer really doesn't move very much faster, even after they put a few hundred dollars into it. And the reason is, is because the hard drive itself, that is the bottleneck. So basically, whenever the computer boots, whenever you load a program, whenever you're reading a file, writing a file, that has to get pushed and pulled from the hard drive. And if the hard drive is slow, your computer is just not going to run very fast. And the curious thing, because everybody focuses, everybody focuses on the processor, everybody focuses on the RAM. So when you go to the store, when you go to Best Buy, when you go to Dell, when you go to Lenovo, they're going to tell you what amazing CPUs they have. They're going to tell you how, like, what mammoth amount of RAM they have in their system. But interestingly enough, many times they will not tell you very much about the hard drive at all. They'll say it's a one terabyte hard drive, or 500 gig hard drive, or two terabyte hard drive, but they're not going to tell you the RPMs, how fast it spins. They're not going to tell you how fast you can actually push and pull data to the hard drive. So interestingly, in the real world, the place where there is usually the bottleneck on the system is the one thing that is talked about the least, the hard drive. Think about it. Whenever you go into a store, whether it's Best Buy, Staples, Office Depot, go to Newegg.com, if you look, they'll give you lots of wonderful specifications about the CPU, about the RAM, about the video card, but many times the hard drive is just a gray area. All you know is that you have whatever size hard drive is in your system and that is it. So one of the things that you are going to want to do is actually test the speed of your hard drive because again the faster your hard drive operates the faster your computer will work, the faster your computer will boot, the faster you'll be able to load programs, the faster you'll be able to do all kinds of fancy stuff. So many times, especially, this is is one of the things for you guys, you know, that are consultants or working in the enterprise world, a lot of times bosses think that they have to replace all of their computers. When in reality, they may be simply, you may simply be able to swap the hard drives in old systems and make the computers work faster. So you may have four or five year old computers in your office. Your boss is thinking you have to do a mass migration, you know, swap out all of those computers, go through all the expense, go through all the time, go through all the energy, when in reality, simply buying new, faster hard drives might be able to speed up all of the systems and uh, make them more usable for you. So the, basically, when you're going to be going out and testing the hard drive, there are a lot of different pieces of software that you can use to test hard drives, just like anything in the IT world. There, there's a million where, ways to, sk to, to skin the squirrel. Um, basically, if you go out to find software to test hard drives, there are lots of versions. The version that I'm showing you today is called the Parkdale Speed Test. And the reason that I like to use it is because it's portable. You don't have to install it. It's just an executable file that you can run. And it's very easy to read the information. So basically, you can look at the information that it gives you, show that to your client or boss, and it's there in a, in a, in a pretty easy to read format. I was playing around with some of the other hard drive speed test software, and it gave good information, but it was a little too techy. 
You, you know, that's the thing is, is remember, whatever information you're getting, you're most likely going to have to present to a boss or present to a decision maker uh, for what to do next. And so the more technical you make the information, the more confused you make that end person, and then the less likely you're actually going to get what you want. So what I like with Parkdale is you can look at it and it basically it's very easy to see what Parkdale is telling you um, so, so that you can uh, show that to your decision maker. Now the system that I'm using today is my, my brand new lab computer that I did actually purchase from Best Buy uh, two or three months ago. So it's got 16 gigs of RAM and some insane i7 i 3.4 gigahertz processor. But as I'm going to show you, the original hard drive is actually relatively slow. So recently um, I picked up a couple of these enterprise class uh, solid state Intel hard drives. So I installed one of these into this lab computer. So this is what I have the system on now, and the original hard drive that is that was in this computer, I now simply use for storage. So I'll show you the speed difference between a new Intel solid state hard drive and the new hard drive that was in this computer. So again, this computer is literally about two years old and these hard drives came out literally about two months ago. So, sh to, so to show you that actually even with a brand new computer, your hard drives can end up being slow. So let's go over to the computer now so I can show you how this works because it really, it's pretty simple, but again, this is one of those very, very simple things that is a great way to upsell new products and services to your clients and to just make your systems run faster in general. So now the website for this Parkdale speed test is a little weird. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to Google Parkdale speed test because it's not a very easy website to get to. So I press enter for Parkdale speed test and then the first thing that comes up is what I want. So Parkdale measure read and write speed. So I click on this and this is what we want. So you want the page that looks like this. The actual website is this thing up here T-H-E-S-Z dot D-I-E-C-R-U dot E-U slash content slash Parkdale dot PHP. So, so that's kind of complicated to, to, to remember. So just remember Parkdale speed test. So basically it gives you some information here and if you scroll down, it shows you where you can download the Parkdale uh, file. So all you do is you're going to be downloading the zip file. So I click this and it downloads and it takes, you know, half a second to do. Now if I open up this zip file, what you'll see is that all there is in here is a single executable. So basically you don't have to install this. Again, that's one of the nice things with this is that you don't have to install it. So I have already actually put this on my desktop and so the little icon for it is here. So this is that executable that I just downloaded. Now to start this, all we have to do is double click and then we are going to do run. So we get this and then basically the first thing that we're going to go to is we're going to go over here to quick access. So quick access gives us this simple, easy to read test that you're probably going to be using. File access and block access gives you uh, more things that you can do, but basically for you, for your clients, the quick access is probably the best way to go. So here is where you can select what hard drive you want to test. So this 111 gigabit hard drive right here. This is my Intel solid state hard drive. And this 916 is the hard drive, this terabyte hard drive that was originally came with this computer. So right now I'm going to select the solid state hard drive. And then over here for file size, this is how big a file are you going to use to test the hard drive with. So what this is going to do is it's going to write to the hard drive and then read from the hard drive. So the larger the file size here, the more accurate the test will be, but the longer it will take. So this is a gig. I don't want to do a gig right now because I'm teaching you guys a class. If I do a gig, it'll take about five minutes. So I'm just going to take this down to about 10 megabytes. Then we have block size. So this is basically how like your operating system stores the data on the hard drive. So with Windows, Windows has a default block size of 64 kilobytes. So we're, I'm just going to put it there. That, that'll give me the most accurate reading for a Windows system. So you decide. You pick your, your hard drive, you decide what file size. Remember, the larger the file size, more accurate, but more time. Um, smaller file size, less accurate, but 
it's quicker. Uh, then you pick the block size. I would say you go with the 64 kilobytes uh, if this is going if if this computer is in fact a Windows computer. And then after that, all you do is you click the start. So now it's doing the test. So it's doing the sequential write. Then it does a sequential read, then it does the random write, and then it does the random read. So what sequential write means is when you are writing to the hard drive as one contiguous block, as in a large, uh, let's say a movie file, like a single file is going to the hard drive. When a single file goes to the hard drive, it's actually able to write at 153.8 megabytes per second. Now the random, what that means is like if you're, if you're copying or writing a lot of individual files that will be stored over the hard drive, so, so in random areas, and with that it's 45.8 megabytes per second. If we go to sequential read, we can see it reads at 196.1 megabytes per second, and random read is 25.6 megabytes per second. Then it also shows us the input output per second. So this is transaction, so like with a database. So whenever you're thinking about hard drives, there, there's two things you have to think about the hard drive, is how fast for files can it push and pull data, but also for individual transactions, how fast can it be? So if you have a database, right? So let's say this is on a database server. And so the information in the database is not very big. We're talking about cells in a database, usernames, passwords, date of birth, that kind of stuff, right? Obviously all that is is, is text, that's not big. But the computer or server, if that's in a database on a web server, it is going to be putting, pushing and pulling a lot of that little data. So what this is saying is how many individual operations can this have per second? So the higher the better. So this is 11,717 uh, random uh, input outputs per second uh, for writing and then for read it's uh, 6,544. So this is the solid state hard drive that I had that I now have in this computer. So this is that new Intel solid state hard drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control, Print Screen, so I can capture this. Then I already have Paint open, and I'm going to hit Control V, and we're just going to save this picture file because now I'm going to test my F drive to see how it compares. So basically, I'm going to now I pull up Parkdale again. I select the F drive. I leave it to the same file size, I leave it to the same block size, and then I will start with this. So now we can see on the hard drive that was in the computer, it's 86.2 megabytes per second write. Sequential read is 161.3 megabytes per second. Random is 8.9. Random read is 22.2. Uh, Input output per second is uh, 2200. Input output per second read is 5684. So if we look at this and we compare, we can see that obviously the solid straight hard drive is doing a lot better than the original hard drive that was in this computer. So even though it was a brand new computer, in this uh, or brand new hard drive in this computer you can see that it was relatively slow so basically the solid state hard drive is about twice as fast for uh, for sequential writing um, for sequential reading it's about a quarter again as fast for random that's the thing random write speed what are we looking at it's about five times as fast and random read speed it's a little bit faster then we can go over, we can look at that input output per second, and we can see for writing, again, it's about five times faster, randomly, and for reading, it's still a little bit faster. So you can take a look at this, and you can show this to your client to show why a solid state hard drive or a new hard drive is running, would run faster in your computer than the current one you have. So when you do this test, you don't simply have to have to test between an old, you know, platter type hard drive and a solid state hard drive. So when I was playing with this, my computer right here behind me actually has about five different hard drives in it. It has a solid state hard drive in it. It has a, uh, a, a 10,000 RPM Raptor hard drive in it, and then it has a couple of normal just SATA 3 hard drives in it. And so I could see that the Raptor 
runs faster than the normal hard drives and the solid state runs faster than all the other ones. So this is a way that you can show your client or your boss why a particular hard drive would run faster. And again, when you're thinking about replacing hard drives, that what you have to realize is a lot, a lot of these brand new hard drives use what are called energy saving hard drives. The way they save energy is by running at 5400 RPM. So even switching to a different platter type hard drive may make your computer run a lot faster. So if you went from a 5400 RPM hard drive to a 10,000 RPM Raptor hard drive, that would make your computer run faster. So you can use this, basically you can use little screenshots just like I did to show your boss why different hard drives would be better for your computer. And if we go back, again as I said, there, there's, the, there's a couple of other things you can do here. So the quick access is what I showed you, but then you can also go over to file access. So this is another way to test the hard drive. So when you're doing quick access, basically Parkdale um, is using its own files to, to read and write to the hard drive. What you can do with file access is you can actually do the tests using real files on your computer. So right here I'm at a desktop, my username is lab, I'll go down to downloads, and in downloads you can see that I have some large files here. So using real files that are on my computer, I can see what the read and write speed is. So this is on my solid state hard drive, since this is a C hard drive, I can select this Ubuntu file that's like 695 megs, and with that I can simply click on read now. So this is actually reading a real large file on my computer to give me an idea of how fast um, it'll act. I can read from it and so I can see about 194.2 megabytes per second with a real file. If I do a write, what this is going to do is actually copy that file and basically it's reading and writing so I can get an idea of how fast the write will be using a real file. So actually I can write at about 151 uh, megabytes per second. Now we can compare that. If I close this, I'll go to my computer and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the hard drive that was originally in this computer. So this Windows F drive. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to go to the user folders. I'm going to go to user and it'll go to downloads. This was the original drive that was in there. And let's look at Ubuntu desktop here and let's do a read from that. So we are reading a real file from the original hard drive in this computer and we can see it's 158.9 megabytes per second. And if we do a write, we can see what that'll be too. So this is a way to give you an idea of how fast these hard drives will operate in the real world. So that's basically how you use Parkdale speed test to test your hard drive and how you can use that information to tell your boss or your client why they should think about getting another hard drive. Again, you know, in today's day and age, people are, you know, people don't have as much money as they used to, so they don't necessarily want to run out and buy another $500 or $1,000 computer. So if you're trying to upsell them new products and services, trying to sell them that much may fail. But if you can say you can make their computers run better, run faster, simply by swapping out the hard drives, that might be a sell that you can do. So instead of selling them a $1,000 computer, you can sell them you know, a solid state hard drive and an hour or two to do the swap. So it's a $300 repair something to think about. Again, remember, again, with, with all the software, uh, you know, as always, there is different software out there you can use to test the hard drives, some better, some worse. I like Parkdale. Uh, it, it's, it's rather reliable and it just gives you that nice graphical um, report that you can show to your users so that they understand what's going on. At the end of the day, remember, they're the ones that actually have to write the check, so the more comfortable they feel with the information, the more likely it is they are going to, to write that check. So as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This class was how to test hard drive speed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you at the next one.